I was nervous. Not sure why. It wasn't as if I was about to perform open heart surgery for the first time or scale the council offices wearing just a pair of Wellington boots and a cagoul. It was just a job interview. The first had been offered in 23 months, two weeks and four days. I had to fill in my application online and then they asked me to bring along a copy. 20 pence a sheet at the phone shop next to the Chinese takeaway on Lambton Lane. On reception was a youth with one of those ponytails on top of his head, pulled so tight that he looked like a startled cockatoo. He directed us all to a meeting room. We looked at each other, faces questioning, waiting for another of our pack of applicants to move first. A man wearing a cerise tie that perfectly matched the colour of his nose stepped forward and that was the impetus to got us moving. I'd never seen so many shirt and tie combinations on so many uncomfortable looking men before. Crumpled suits from the rear of a wardrobe had been dug out for the duration and later they'd be back in the dark resting on a non-recyclable plastic hanger. Once inside the meeting room, we all shuffled into available chairs and pretended to be occupied with our folders. No one appeared interested in speaking to anyone else. I wasn't in the mood for small talk. So I pulled at a thread that was hanging from the seam of my best wedding come funeral come christening slacks. I looked up and framed in the doorway was a woman with shoulders so broad she'd have made a great javelin thrower. She was dressed in a jacket the colour of grass and consulted a clipboard, more I think to give her an air of authority rather than to double check the details upon it. My name was called and I rose, wiped the fronts of my shoes on the back legs of my trousers and followed her out of the room. Nice tie, Dennis, she said, indicating for me to hand her the folder and sit down. Christmas present for my wife in... She was obviously not interested so I didn't bother completing my sentence. So, Dennis, what qualities do you think you can bring to the position on offer? Lunch was a tuna sandwich and a can of something fizzy. And after, with a gut full of gas and fishy breath, I was back in the interview room with seven other hopefuls. We sat in a circle, and our interviewer is standing in the centre. The green jacket had been removed, revealing impressive biceps beneath a sheer blouse. Must be all that javelin throwing, I thought, allowing myself a wry smile. She informed us that we'd been selected to participate in a recruitment workshop. Firstly, we're asked to think up three statements to deliver to the rest of the group. Two true and one false. And considering that none of us knew each other, it seems to me to be a pointless task. An applicant is chosen and a dumpy little man with several chins stood up. His neck wobbled as he told us his three statements. The first being, he'd built a radio-controlled scale model of the Bismarck. The second, that he'd once won a pie-eating contest in Homefirth whilst on a last of the summer wine day trip. And finally, that he'd walked the length of Adrian's Wall to highlight the declining population of the Great Crested Newt. Thank you, said the interviewer. So which of the statements do we think is false? The third, said a man wearing a floral tie with a large knot that looked like a hanging basket under his chin. He looks like he'd struggle to walk the length of a swimming pool. Dumpy shot him an angry glance and pointed out that the false statement was actually the pie-eating contest. OK, let's settle down now. Dennis, can you approach the group, please? I looked at the complacent faces in the circle, took a breath and I said... <clears throat> I left school in the year of Her Majesty's Silver Jubilee, and so my three statements are from 1977. Oh, and by the way, they're all true. One, the Yorkshire Ripper attacked six women, four of whom died. Two, Manchester United Football Club sacked Tommy Doherty. And three, Chrysler built the Sunbeam, a car that looked like a Lego brick on wheels. The complacent faces now looked confused. I know what I've just said was pointless because, you see, when I arrived here this morning, I was nervous. Sounds ridiculous now. I'm nearly 59 years of age and I'm asked to participate in this stupidity for a p 
part-time jobs stacking supermarket shelves? Back in 1977, I were asked two questions. Can you do the job? And when can you start? Times change. It's called progress, our interviewer said. It's called nonsense, I said. I don't want a job so badly that I'm prepared to make a fool of myself. This workshop shenanigans, it may tick boxes, but let me tell you this. I indicated towards the seven other men sat in the room. You might as well stand us all in a line and throw a javelin, and whoever it spears gets the job. And so I walked away thinking, that were 80 pence wasted on printing. <laughs>